All right, before we get into this, I just want to welcome you to the channel. Hopefully you're having a good morning, afternoon, or evening. And welcome to Black Myth Wukong. A game I've been looking forward to for a very, very long time now. Ever since the first trailers and teasers were coming out way back many years ago. And it's officially here in our laps. And uh, I've been having a blast playing this on the live streams. And, uh, and I recorded it all for you. So hopefully you enjoy this. Um, there's going to be no camera. I've left the camera out of it because I want you to have the full immersion of what this game can offer. It's got beautiful storytelling, beautiful visuals. So just sit back, relax. I've got it all in 4K. So make sure you've got it on the best thing you can watch it on. Uh, and it's, it's a blast. So without further ado, I just want to big... Uh, thank game science for sending over a key and uh yeah let's get in to black myth wukong My master, <laughs> safe. The scriptures, sound. All I ever wanted was a life in my mountain, free from you and your so-called merits. Those high above don't trust me. I understand that. And they send you and those knuckleheads to threaten me. To obey and serve once more. <laughs> I understand that too. But what I don't understand is... You bastards killing my kind! not just any monkey. He's a monkey of merit. A monkey was made Buddha once. None other than me can challenge him to a duel. Look, monkey. I don't make a habit of fighting someone I've bested before. Here's my offer. If you lose, I'll take you to the Celestial Court. They will stay and level your mountain. But if I lose, I shall certainly take revenge, and they will level your mountain nonetheless. Hmm. 
How tragic would that be, huh? You are one of the court. We don't need to resort to violence. How about you bend the knees, admit the wrongs, and we can put this behind us? <laughs> All these years, except for that pig, you're the one who talks the tallest tales. Good, I am entertained. Speaking of entertainment, wouldn't it be fun if I pluck your extra eye out for my snack and allow you to keep the other two? Because I'd hate to let you miss how I'll slaughter each mongrel of the court. Those below, those above, and that black mutt of yours. Come at me, all of you. Oh, are we going into game? We are going into game. Oh my God. What an intro so far. Okay, so I can lock onto him. Oh. Okay, so please to dodge. Is there a block? Is there a block? Is that block? No, that's not block. <laughs> oh my god, the dog. Ow. Where's my health? Okay, so these are abilities. That does like a rock kind of thing. Oh my god. And then this one. Oh my god. This one summons loads of knees. Attack him! Oh my god. That damage though. Okay, so that doesn't really last for that long. So you really want to do that like at the perfect timing. The victorious fighting Buddha. Have you any idea how many would give their everything for immortality? Immortality? <laughs> for that word, all realms and beings have ruined themselves. Oh, phase two. Combat is so fluid. Okay, so when you get hit by that, it actually knocks them off balance. Put me down. The Celestial Court welcomed you, foul monkey, yet you remain untamed. None shall save you now. <laughs> Dear brother, your edge needs homing. Good. I was in need of a back scratcher. This is cinema. What is he doing? Ow.
He actually does that. And so ends the last tale of Sun Wukong. A hero who treasured his freedom above all else. Buddhahood he attained, yes, but cumbersome he found the celestial rules, for he yearned to come back and to revel in the simple joys with us. Little did he know, his choice to forgo the life above only fueled their mistrust. <sighs> this stone has stood for countless days on the mountain. Since my youth, they said that his remains lie within it. <clears throat> Unbegotten, undying, such is the nature of a stone monkey. Though his body was broken, his spirit endures. Into six relics he turned, and separately they escaped, choosing to stay hidden. Those are the six senses of the great sage. Yet no one has ever seen them, not in centuries. I'm old now. Venture through all the lands, I cannot. Yet among you, there might be one who is destined. One that shall recover all his scattered relics. And upon the return of the relics to Mount Tuaguo, he may yet rise again.
Well, what an intro to a game. And my jaw was literally on the floor the whole time. Like, that was phenomenal. And to think that we are now playing a brand new monkey. But welcome to chapter one, Black Cloud Red Fire. And I'm curious how this is going to go now, because we're starting bare bones. We have no skills, abilities. We have to make our way up the food chain and come across many falls. And it's going to be an epic journey. Than our home, we cheat death and ever grow. Huh? Here, yeah. you see what bliss my face well, shows. Well, well. <laughs> Luck's around the corner. Seems like he just fell from a fruit oh, yes. tree here. Perfect timing. This peach knew I needed a snack. <laughs> you sneaky rascal! <laughs> Dad, fool me! I'll make sure you regret it. We're in the forest. I can already feel the difference compared to the other one. Perform consecutive light attacks. Uh, portraits unlocked. Oh. You're still as mischievous as ever. Hello. Friendly. But look at this we're already in the forest and you can already see the work that's been done by unreal engine 5 and we just got some uh, information or something right journal what's this portraits lesser yagwise wolf scout and wolf sw uh, sworn sword so we have got some lure so i am going to read through like majority of these well all of them uh, if you want to skip ahead you're more than welcome to uh, i'm going to kind of read these out because i'm going to guess there is no voice lines so, uh, yeah, you're more than welcome to skip ahead. But, the Wolf Scout. Immaculate skills, the wolf's lawn aim. No prize too high, its heart's aflame. Yet wayward efforts brought no gain. A futile vision, all in vain. Among the wolf guys, there was a young one. Ambitious and always seeking rapid progress on the path of the Dowie. However, this time spent practicing was short and his skills remained shallow. He couldn't yet grasp the deeper techniques of his clan, leaving him impatient. One day, during his routine patrol, he carried a cask of fine wine. As he passed the mountain gate, he encountered the gatekeeper, Bulgard, who had a weakness for liquor. Eager to learn, the young wolf shared the wine with Bulgard and seized the opportunity to inquire about secret techniques. Partaking in the wine, feeling compelled, Bulgard taught him a few tricks. Rejoicing, the young wolf hurried home to practice. Two months passed, and having found little benefit in those teachings, he contemplated giving up. Recalling his previous success in bartering wine for knowledge, he retrieved a small golden statue and approached the snake patroller. Persuaded by gold, the greedy creature shared some techniques with him. Back at home, the young wolf practiced as instructed. Another month passed, yet his gains remained minimal. Undeterred, he repeated his tactics with other guais, exchanging valuables for teachings. Over time, he visited everyone in the mountain, amassing a repertoire of techniques. Yet, despite practicing one today and another the next, he made no progress. Eventually, a compassionate elder wolf offered guidance. Yet the young wolf conversely started lecturing the kind old wolf with his strange mastery, leaving him speechless. From that point on, no one in the clan was willing to teach him. And that is the story of the Wolf Scout. So I believe there is one more, which is the Wolf Sworn Sword. So just to let you know, I don't know much about Chinese mythology, and I'm glad we're getting something like this now, because over the years, we've had so many Nordic like games come out, that, and I'm kind of eager to learn about the Chinese <laughs> mythology and all that kind of stuff so it's a new twist and i am going to mess up the word so i do do forgive me i'm going to say things wrong just kind of go with the flow and all that kind of good stuff so the wolf sworn sword meager of whipped wrapped in white attire in sludge they crawl yet yearn for hire 
bent to power king's favor they seek where either where 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 even lowly falls may peak. A white wolf, wolf guy patrolling the hills seized a sword from a traveller, jewel studded in scabbard, scabbard, its blade sharp and bright. Convetting it, he strapped the sword to his side, reveling in its splendour. Yet when it was time to give tribute, he hid it away. The other guayes chided, Without offering such treasures to the king, how will you earn this favour? Or do you fancy patrolling forever? The wolf guai scoffed. Such treasures were cherish. The king barely notices. You offer scrap metal and dream of favour? You are fools. They dismissed his words, seeing them as mere excuses to shirk his duty. While they toiled on, the gulf guai indulged in peaches and drank wherever he could lay, uh, lay hands on them, keeping the very best for himself. The others knew his punishment would come and waited. One day, the Black Wind King held a lecture of Buddhism in the mountains, speaking of enlightenment and revival. His guardians spread paper talismans and are all well commanded to consume them uh, before the chanting and prayers. Hours later, the king inquired about their enlightenment. A pause fell, then a white-robed wolf guai stood, and there emerged others, one by one. The next day a decree was issued to the guardians. The wolf guy was promoted to a minor captain. All the other guayes puzzled, whispered among themselves, how had the wolf guai not only escaped punishment, but found himself rewarded? And that was the story of the wolf sworn sword. So I'm going to guess every enemy we come across, we are going to get them. And it does seem we have 14. And there's chiefs, uh, kings, yao guy or your guy. I think it's your guy. Yao guy. Oh, they, they might man mention it in the, the game with voice actors and stuff. And then we've got characters as well. We also have an inventory system. Obviously, we don't have anything. Equipment. Oh, so we have, you can see our health and everything on the right hand side. Um, our attack and all this kind of stuff. We are level one. We do have a Willow Wood staff, um, which I'm going to guess we can upgrade. Some new attire, whatever this is, which is locked. We do have a head headband or whatever. And Curio 1 and 2, which are like bracelets and necklaces and stuff. Then we have an old gird. So we have this as well. I think it's good, good, gourd, and all that kind of stuff. Then we have off hands, which I'm going to guess are going to be your portions and all that good stuff. Then we have self advance, which is our abilities. Seeking guidance from deities. Better to steer your own path, chanting scriptures. Better to have abilities in hand. So we have the foundation and we have stance stances. So in here we have stamina, martial arts and survival. And things are going to be juicy down here. So this is obviously going to affect the stamina branch and the cost of jumping and perfect dodges. And then we have light attacks and increase the focus gain during the spins. Oh, so this can actually block um, ranged units. And then we have survival, which is obviously going to be our health. And we can see some things are locked behind a level 15, 30 and 45. And then we have staff stances, smash stance, pillar stance, and thrust stance. So a smash stance, the, he the heavy attack of the smash stance, capable of charging while moving around in battle, is highly versatile and the best choice for engaging in tactical combat. The pillar stance, the heavy attack of a pillar stance, allows perching on top of his staff with adjustable height. One can launch a sweeping counterattack while evading ground attacks with the technique combining offense and defense. Then we have the thrust stance. A heavy attack of a thrust stance requires a destined one to stand in place while charging. It can strike enemies from a distance uh, and, in, uh, and is particularly effective against incoming attacks. It is the best technique for achieving victory while remaining defensive. Okay, so obviously we don't have a point or anything yet. And then unawakened. Unfulfilled immortal bonds patiently awaiting the moment to come. Okay, so there's something on the right hand side which is going to unlock as well. But let's get moving and bloody grooving and see where this story is going to take us. Okay, sprint with right bumper. Can I use left stick as well? I can. Nice. Got a plant. Our first plant. Age Jensing. Jensing. Oh. Hello, friendly. I love the whole kind of like walking he does when he's... Looking at an enemy, he's like, could just bring it on. Just locking eye contact, ready for that fight. It looks so nice. So we can see in the bottom right as well, this is our focus meter. So we have the bar on the left-hand side. We can. I'm guessing that's the stance in the middle. 
So we'll be able to switch up stances. And then we have that little dot on the right hand side, which fills up and glows, which means we can do more damage when we um, hold the heavy attack, which has literally just come up. Hold to charge and build up focus. Hold heavy attack to charge. Charging costs stamina, but quickly builds up focus. Okay. So I noticed this during the... Uh, the tutorial. That's how I was doing that massive slams. <laughs> okay, some God of War box opening. As per usual. Tiny piece of... Oh, there's someone else here now. Tiny piece of gold. Stone spirit. Who's this? He's got like a little Albert. You're new. Look, look, just look how he's locking eyes. Ow. Nice. Portraits a lot. The wolf stalwart. Oh, it looks like we've missed somebody. We can't have missed somebody during our little travel. Literally on a left and a right, that's it. So we have the wolf stalwart. Neither skies curve nor earth beat will hold. With liquor's laugh, bold spirits unfold. In drunken dreams, a cosmos wide, wake with worries cast aside. Rare was revelry for the minor guise who patrolled mountain paths, their delights not granted but taken in human guise. Thieving sustenance from unsuspecting townsfolk. The charade proven fleeting for the villagers grew wise to their deceit and the guise off caught mid bite were met with the town's rugged justice deterring their mischief among them was a wolf guy with a penchant for drink who on a day of indolence indolence lay beneath an ancient tree suddenly an elder wolf cloaked in feathers of a crane appeared to, uh, to him asking why forsake your patrol for idleness? The wolf guy sighed, I long for drink, but the townsfolk see through me. I'm left to quench my thirst only in my dreams. The elder chuckled as he whispered a secret. Seek the shrine, conceal yourself behind the curtains, and the sacred spirit's liqueur shall be yours to drink. Then with a shift of form, he vanished. Wavering and in doubt, the wolf guy transformed and hurried to the town shrine. There, veiled behind curtains, a sacred effigy stood. Its origins are known, the altar laden with delectable offerings and fine spirits. As advised, he nestles himself between the curtains, indulging in liquor until he belches betrayed him to the gathering crowd in the shrine. Trapped between the curtains, the wolf guy listened to a voice rang out. The wine, the wine jarred I offered is empty. Our tributes were received. A chorus of prayers erupted, beseeching favour from the immortals. From that day forth, the folks from miles around flocked to the shrine, affording the demon endless drink. But as days passed, the once delightful treat turned bitter, and those prayers, but then piteous or greedy, weighed heavily upon him with helplessness. One day, unable to endure the bitterness any longer, the wolf guy burst from behind the curtains, hoisting the jar and smashing it on the altar amidst the screams of onlookers. With a deafening crash, he suddenly awoke beneath the tree. No shrine, no incense, no crowd around. With a tired sigh, he took up his axe and left off to patrol the mountains once more. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the story of the Wolf Star Lord. And we've just got ourselves a body cooling powder. Which is an alleviating medicine. Upon use, instantly removes burn state and significantly increases burn resistance for a short time. Ooh. Okay, so that's ultimately been equipped at the bottom. And then we have some of these. So we have a tiny piece of gold. A tiny piece of gold, its origin is indiscernible. Discernible? Perhaps uh, uh, some trade could be done at the Keeper's Shrine. Also got some yarn and some spirit. So this is can be crafted to armor. Okay, interesting. And this can be used to craft weapons. We also have some aged ginseng, which can be used to make medicines, which is cool. Let's continue throughout these woods. So, from what I be believe, it is a very linear kind of story. It is, in, uh, uh, from what I've been told, an action RPG. Um, with a sprinkle of souls-like. Oh, what is this? We're following a little furry or something. Oh, what you waiting for? Pluck your hair and make an offer. Hey, hey, wait! 
Hi. The keeper of Black Wind Mountain have long been waiting for your arrival. What in the Mr. Potato Head is that? He's got a back scratcher. Oh, his spitting image. I'd say. It looks like a potato that's been left out a in the corner of your kitchen, Guanyin you know. Temple. Once it was bustling with worshippers before it was ruined by that fire. Ah. Then the temple was rebuilt. Oh, what good is it to rebuild a temple if the goodwill of men has been burnt to ashes? You've forgotten this place, but they haven't forgotten you. Oh, that's a tough one. Good luck to you. So he's a strange fella. Incest Trill Talisman Special Item. What is that? Using this talisman shall immediately free the soul from the body and guide it back to the last keeper's shrine visited for resurrection. Okay. So if we want to go back to these, which is, I guess, these are checkpoints then. They are. So we can rest here. We can travel. So let's just rest. And it looks like we've got a gift or something. So we can travel to the others. Obviously, we're in the forest of the wolves right now. Trailblazer's gift, which is this. Oh, it's a pre-order gift. Oh, nice. Okay, so how does this work? Uh, so each ship restores 33% of maximum health. Each ship restores 33% of maximum health. What's the difference? One's common, one's... Are oh, there's five... Okay, five uses in this one and four uses in this one. Okay, so obviously you equip that one. A little pre-order perk right there. Again, thank you Game Science for the key. So nice. So what have we got here now? The Wolf Soldier. Oh, nice. It filled that little spot we had open. The story of the Wolf Soldier. Sunswept hills they guard and tread. From glint of steel they daily bread. Far flung from their native land. At night's far home their souls shall stand. Ever since the Black Bear Gwai returned from the Gwai and crowned himself king, he boasted of the arts he had learned. Tales of his newfound method of practice and power of revival allured many Gwai to Black Wind Mountain. Seeking the king's favour, these minions toiled with, uh, with abandon. Among them, a wolf Gwai worked with tireless zeal. He rose before dawn, patrolled the mountains, and continued well into the night. All of the treasures he found were first laid at the king's feet. His life was once of labour, and yet without a moment to make friends. Despite his decision, his presence barely stirred a whisper among the others, and his name was seldom uttered. His brother, seeing such unknowledged dedication, spent his savings for a seat in the king's lecture. The wolf guy sat there, heavily with regret for the silver he had squandered, both on the journey here and the seat and the lecture of the lecture. That could have been used to buy himself a shield or blade. Had it a new blade, he must glory have been mine. As he pondered this, golden-clad guardians scattered at paper talismans before him, commanded to consume them. Then they chanted in medication for hours until King sought signs of enlightenment. The white-robed wolf Gwai stood first, claiming a fever within and clarity of mind. The diligent wolf Gwai thought to himself, sweating fervently in the crowd is no marvel, achieving clarity after chanting is no miracle. Just as he was lost in thought, the blue ox Gwai rose next, followed by others. The diligent wolf Gwai stayed seated, unsure, until the king gestured for them all to sit down. Later, treasures were doled out, the ox Gwai received a golden pill, the white robe wolf Gwai a title, but the diligent one kept his old shield and dull blade, patrolling the mountain still. 
Only from then on, he did it all under the white robe one win uh, one white robe one's whims. That's a little bit of a tongue twister. Ever obedient, and that is the story of the wolf soldier. In I'm loving these bits of lore because we've just learned out about the bear as well. So I'm wondering if that's going to be a thing. And we've also heard about the bulldog, the the bull bull, whatever it was called. Forest of the Wolves still. It's easy one shot with them. These aren't one shot though. These are a bit more tankier, these. Yeah, these can take at least two of them. Oh, we just got a spike. Which I'm guessing is a level up. Got some mushrooms here before we go on to do that. Purple Ling's Eye. So, uh, inventory, we just got a Ling's Eye, which I'm going to guess is a medicine. Correct. And then self advance, we do have a spark available now. So let's go into. St Ooh, what do we want to put it in? I'm thinking we just kind of go straight with the martial arts. Each talent level significantly increases the engage distance of light attack starter. Yeah, let's let's bring that in. Let's get some more on the offense. And then depending on who we're coming up against, I'm hoping we might be able to respec and stuff just in case we need to do it for certain enemies. Oh, hello, friend. Your face looks familiar. Oh, my God. Look at that guy. He's a new guy. Big ass blue auger kind of thing. What is that? Hello? What in the Lion King? He's looking for Simba. He's fleeing though. Can we chase him? Nope, can't go down there. What's this? Gather. Gandhar of form, key item. What is that? So obviously we got the plant, and then we got this. Man shrinks at order, but smiles at beauty, which is only natural. Once hidden inside the Buddha's head, this treasure has a secret yet to be revealed. Hmm, okay. Is there anything along here? Along this road? Doesn't seem like it. Never mind, maybe there is. Some flesh for our taking. <laughs> I love the perfect dodges, how it gives you that kind of like advantage and kind of staggers them a little bit. And you get like a quick response into their uh what the hell is this? It's a frog. Oh my god, he popped. Um, okay, I thought he poisoned me then. Okay, journal. We've got another Yogwa, I think. A croaky. The story of the croaky. In pools they dwell, forms unrefined, ugly and odd voices entwined. Bellies swell with a ra ra raucous tune, raucous tune. In death they burst an angry boom. Two frog wise practiced in the marshes. The smaller frog was often bullied, yet the bigger one always stood up, uh, uh, stood up for him, uh, and soon they forged a strong friendship. One day, amid uh, amid a contest held by Barley Gu Lang to appoint a sergeant among uh, among the, all the frogs. Turmoil stirred and ripped through the ranks. Finally, the choice was narrowed down to two, the brawny big frog and the quick-witted small frog. Though the other frogs were discontented, they dared not voice their dis uh, dissent. The two then were assigned to guard the dwelling of Ba Lai Gulang, I could be pronouncing that wrong, I don't know, on their duty. A valuable amber glass was found broken. Unable to identify the culprit, all the frogs began clamouring for punishment against the two instead. 
The big frog attempted to reason with them, but got antagonized by the words and soon escalated the argument into a brawl. The frogs interpreted this which uh, interpret interpreted his, <laughs> this uh, his reaction out of embarrassment, hence evidence of his guilt. The small frog, meanwhile, remained silent beside them. Seeing this, the big frog chided him for uh, uh, for not speaking up in his defence, and even began to suspect his uh, his smaller companion. Hesitated for a while, the small frog then admitted to breaking the glass. However, the other toads dismissed his confession, arguing that one of, uh, one of them had committed premeditated vandalization while the other had neglected his duty and both de uh, de deserved punishment by death. The small frog uh, grew anxious and could not help but engage in the argument. As their voice grew louder and louder, their bellies inflated larger and larger until some of them finally burst, splattering blood and water and flesh all over the place, leaving none unsoiled. And that's the story of Crokey. Crokey. Someone guess there's going to be more frogs. Oh. Can I go this way? I can. Where's this taking me? Oh, who's this guy? Friendly? What are you? Is that a crow? He's got a crow's head. Jesus. Crow Diviner. That's a cool image. Crow Diviner. He knows the world fate through di uh, divination, yet cannot secure his own salvation. In what he thought was a place of peace, fate tangled threads never cease. It is said that the crows gathering in temples have listened to sutras and teachings every day, developed in spiritual nature and could predict fortune and misfortune. Thus, some fortune tellers who call themselves crow diviners like to set up stalls in front of temples using crows to pick fortune sticks for divination. They always lit sandalwood incense, which symbolizes the temple at the stalls and claim that the crows were spiritually enlightened ones from the temple. One such crow diviner had a crow he had raised from a chick, which could communicate with him using specially made fortune sticks. Every day, he sent the crow to various parts of the city to observe people's lives. When, peop uh, when clients came to seek fortunes, he would use the fortune sticks to inquire about information from the crows. He mixed his information about his understandings of human affairs, weaving prophecies that were half true and which managed to deceive. One day, an official came seeking a fortune, offering a large sum of money. The crow's diviner told him that his official career would be prosperous and that he would reach a high position. Unexpectedly, the official not only failed to get promoted that year, but was demoted instead. Enraged, the official brought his household servants to demand an explanation. The crow diviner used this information, gathered by the crows to explain that the official had not sent enough money on temple renovation, which magically convinced him. The official, deeply belie uh, believing in his abilities, even introduced the crow diviner to his colleagues. The crow diviner amassed a considerable fortune through this, but he knew too many secrets of the officials and feared for his life. He decided to change his career. One day he attempted to drive all the crows away, but they refused to leave. The crow diviner tried various means to get rid of them, but the crows, unable to endure the mistreats any longer, attacked and pecked him to death. Afterwards, the crows transformed into human forms, donned the attire of fortune tellers, and continued to sell fortunes around the temple, deceiving people as the crow diviner had done. Oh my god! Damn! So the crows were pecking humans and then turned into humans, that's crazy and very snaky. 
What's this? Mushroom. Oh, like a blue greeny orb thing. Hello. Gather. Will times 18. Um, okay, we can't go that way. Back this way we go. Oh, this is where the benchmark is in the game. You actually start here in the benchmark. And there's usually a little fox uh, soldier walking along there. Okay, I guess we're going to head to that blue creature, whatever it is. I head back this way. So if you're wondering, I am pulling about 90 FPS right now in my current settings. Which is pretty good. I've got RTX on, DLSS on, quality, everything maximum. And oh boy, does it look stunning. Okay, I guess we're going to this guy over here. Seeing what this guy can do. Hey, friendo. Okay, bull guard. Okay, we've heard about him in the stories. Get my stamina back up. Drink a little juice juice. God, this music is so nice. Whoa. Um, hello? Oh, it's Mr. Spudman. It's been a while, but the immobilized spell still works like a charm. <laughs> Since you hail from Mount Huaguo, it won't hurt to teach you a handy trick. Now, here we go. Give me your hand. Immobilize spells. A simple hand gesture can bind the enemy in place. This is what, um, I'm just going to call him Wukong, the guy at the beginning. We don't know if it was, I'm guessing it was Wukong. But we don't know who this guy is. For all we know, this could be the new Wukong, so. There you go. Should you come across any miscreants, just point your finger at them and release this spell. You'll be able to hold them in place while giving yourself a breather. Sadly, mine is but a humble trick. Its power will wear off within a few short moments. Though it's good enough against boneheads like this one. Anyway, just consider it an ace up your sleeve. No! Oh. The Yagwais these days know no manners. Fear not. Yagwais. Teach him a lesson with your new spell. Okay, so we can block him into place now. Nice. Nice little fight. Our first, like, true fight, to be honest. The question is, is we already know that's a bull guard because we've heard him in our stories so far. Oh, we can actually... Oh, so this is what this is. We can actually put... Ooh, interesting. So we can... Im uh, this is the immobilized spell. We can crash. Each talent level moderately increases damage dealt to the immobilized enemies. Or we can go hitting an immobilized enemy with light attack slightly extends the duration of the next immobilization inflicted on them. This effect can stack up five times. I guess that would be good against bosses, right? Because you're not really going to use a 
spell to keep a normal unit in place and stack it again, right? Because if you're going to... Yeah, makes sense. You might use it on the bull guard, maybe. But um, I wouldn't say anything smaller than that, unless they're a pain in the ass to kill. Uh, each talent moderately increases damage dealt to mobile enemies. That sounds pretty cool. What about stances? Smash that. I kind of like this smash stance. Each talent level increases slightly the health recovery upon consuming a focus point. Wait, each talent level slightly increases the health recovery upon consuming a focus point. Hmm. Enable sprinting while charging. Performing heavy attack during light attack combo with a focus point consumed allows the destined one to execute resolute strike. During resolute strike, the destined one can see through the incoming enemy attacks and nullify their damage. Enemies that have been seen through are easier to stop. <laughs> We're going straight for that. All right, so we've just learned about the... Oh, he's over here. <gasps> he was a chief. Okay, so you have the minions, then you have the rooks and the bishops and whatnot. Then you have the king and queens. The bull guard. Okay, so there's only four, four chiefs then. Maybe four chiefs in the forest are in chapter one. Maybe? Anyway, the bull guard. Majestic of height, he looms with might in heavy armor ready to fight. His eyes are fearsome, vacant lots. A sage or a fool, we know not. Being the gatekeeper of the mountain was the th uh, thankless task indeed. For more than a century, Bullguard stood watch, never once climbing the ranks. Yet he voiced no grievances, for his devotion to the king was his sole concern and king's pills it was his only desire. He treated those pills with a liqueured box of purwood, lined with silk. Each time he partook of them, he performed a ritual, a process of cleansing, rinsing, and offering incense to the universe, thanking it for its gifts. Many a lesser guai had taste, uh, tasted the king's rewards, but none with such reverence as Bolgard. One day, a curious guai inquired, How do you maintain such vigour despite the toils of this job? With the earnest simplicity, Bolgard replied, It is the king's pill that fuels me. Take more, and you shall be as I am. The Gwai confessed, We partake in our share, yet felt nothing. M mayhaps the king's gifts to you are finer? Bulgard was aghast. From the same hand we are served, how could there be a mine in yours? The Gwai, still sceptical, insisted on an exchange of pills. And soon after, the Gwai felt no change, while the Bulgard remained as robust as ever. Some say, a fool's luck. But perhaps it isn't, a, uh, isn't at all. Uh, a lack of wit that's compensated, but the power drawn from blind devotion. God, I love these lawyers. These are so good. But that is the bull guard. The bull guard. He was a pretty cool uh, character. Obviously, I've seen the trailer, so I've seen some of the things that are going to be coming up in the game. And I'm kind of... Uh, oh. Self-advancing sparks. Open self-advance to awaken talent. Oh, yeah, we've already kind of done that. Unless I've got one. No. Okay, what have we got up here? More? More of them? We want to explore everywhere because it is very linear, but there's like very much open spots where you can find like hidden things. Well, we have got another spark now. That bull, uh, bull guy must have uh, given us quite a decent XP. I'm just wondering if we should put some in, like, health or something. Or if we put it into each talent level, moderate increases damage dealt to the immobilized enemy. Boom. It's in. It's locked. There's frogs over there as well. I've got a guy here. Very easy just to take out. One shot like that. I guess, especially the swordsman. Oh, two frogs. One frog. Oh, yeah, I nearly forgot about him exploding then. Oh, my God. I didn't... That one didn't, know. Well, he blew me up. Use guard to recover health. Yeah, I might as well do that. There's nothing else here. Oh, there's these plants, though, I guess. 
Jade Lotus. Nothing on there. That was like a perfect ambush around that rock. Someone just to jump out. Little wolf assassin. Age ginseng. We've got a structure coming up. So there is no difficulty to the, to the game. It's just based on if you farm, basically. Because I could just run past all these if I wanted to. But doing that is not going to give me XP and sparks and level it up and stuff. Oh, what's this? Meditate. So it's just kind of like a lookout. Oh, we get sparks from them. Okay. We're getting these sparks so fast. And we got a meditation spot, which has no dialogue, just the, the Orb of Forest of Wolves. Okay, and we got a self-advance. So I'm thinking we kind of go down. Um, Each talent level moderately increases maximum stamina. Maximum health. Each talent model reduces the stamina cost of dodging. Cost of sprinting. Grants more focus when the second move of the light attack combo hits an enemy. Yes. We're not really struggling for health right now, but I have a feeling that I'm going to kick myself. Saying that. Oh, we're heading into a cave. We've got another furry thing to take. I'm going to guess this is going to take us to them incense sticks. The last time we had one of these was at the, the previous one. It is. Oh, there's some, uh, some up ahead. Some wolves. Self-advance. Reignite the sparks. Wait. Oh, so we can. We can reclaim all the sparks. So we can basically just re redo our things. Oh, that's free. Ugh. And set spells. Okay, so it's going to get to a point where we're going to have more than four spells. And we've got to... We can switch them out to our like. We've also got a store now so we can buy things. Okay, we've got 1,232 currency. Um... Upon use, considerably increases damage reduction. Okay. Burnt states and poison state. Let's get... Let's get two of these damage reduction and get two of these burnt ones. Poison? I've not really come across anybody with poison. I'll buy one of them, though. I need to make sure which one's which, though, as well. Oh, my God. Jesus. You don't think you can just parade in, do you? It's not that simple. <sighs> Let me transform you into a golden cicada so you may follow the fires ahead and scout this mountain unnoticed. Fly! <laughs> scout it. That's pretty cool. It might be humble. But my shrine is very versatile. You'll get it soon. Wait, so does that mean I can turn into this whenever now? Kind of scout around. Like a fly. 
I've got an ability as well. Uh, whoops. Can I? Well, I can't go back to it. <laughs> well, that was a waste. Okay, so the, um, the portions. Body cooling powder is up. Uh, defense is right and poison is down. Okay, noted. Well, I guess we're not scouting now. I guess we're taking the fight straight to him. Nice. Hello. But you can definitely see the uh, damage increase now. What on earth is that big baby head thing? If the if you can hear them walking, we're just gonna stay away just for now. I think there's a passage way back this way. There was. What's in here? What the? How's that sound? Like a weird crunching. Oh, oh, there's oh, there's a guy here. A chest there, though. Oh, hello, big boy. Okay, you was a tough boy. What are you, a bandit chief? From humble start to seek revenge claim, path may differ yet burn with same flame. In bygone days, there lived a youth in the town, the son of a martial arts master. His father's fondness for drink led to foolish act that landed the old man in jail, leaving only the youth and his mother struggling to survive. As their situation grew dire, the young man took on any work to make ends meet. The villagers praised him for caring for his mother, deeming him a dutiful son. In an unlucky year of crop failure, the mother and son set out to seek refuge with relatives. Along the way, a gang of bandits emerged. Eyes fierce, faces scared, they brandished their blade, demanding nothing but gold. The mother and son, destitute, resorted to begging for mercy, but the bandits showed no mercy and were intent on killing them. The young man, believing their death was imminent, seized a bandit's knife. With a resolute heart, he ended his own mother's life and pledged himself to the bandits. And so he joined their ranks. News of the incident spread and people condemned him as a coward, truly a cursed son. Years passed and one day the entire gang of bandits was wiped out, leaving no trace. Some said a hero had come to rid the land of evil and uphold justice. Others claimed a guai had emerged in the mountains, bringing a long delayed reckoning. Debates raged on, but eventually the topic faded from memory. One day, a man covered in blood stumbled down from the mountains, recounting and encountering with the towering bandits, neither human nor guai, welding a massive blade to rob the roads. His face bore an uncanny resemblance to that cursed youth, Yet he spoke of freeing humanity from its burdens. Ooh. That bandit chief killed his own bloody mother just to save himself. Jeez. We got a skill point as well. Another one. And another one. Um. And another one. And another one. Wait, did I not get this one here? I thought I got this one. Wait, after sprinting, light attack starts to temporarily deals more damage. Oh no, I got, um, you know what? Let's just go with a bit of health. Um, just because. Am I, po oh no, I thought I was poisoned. 
And also, I didn't rest at that um that place, did I? I knew that was going to happen because that's exactly the same spot you see when you actually see in the uh, in the um, little tutorial guide in the skills menu. Oh, what's up here? Just a bush. That's all collectible. You was oh, there's another crow thing. Ow. my last heal portion though I definitely need to go and rest okay we've been along there there's nothing here can I go through here nope you never know always check waterfalls always check them Nobody. I am your worst nightmare. The guy over here. Missed him. Okay, so that's the bridge again. Okay, so what's in here? What's in this place? Oh, this has to be a boss. I have no portions or anything. I guess I could try it and see what happens, but... If I can one-shot this, that'd be awesome. Monkey, I see. Why don't you lay down your weapon and join me? He's your anxiety. We've heard what about him. You? Oh, fire portion. Oh. God, was not expecting that. Okay, we already knew I was going to die there, but hey, to be honest, we didn't do too bad. I think we knocked him down to maybe half health. But I guess we go back to the thing now. We can go back there and potentially fight him again with portions this time. Shield break. Enemies with shields can use them to block regular attacks. Yeah, kind of as expected. I guess it does mean everybody's going to... Yeah, everybody's kind of reset here now.
Oh, I got them both. Strike. I love the reach of that. Okay, so I don't want to go next to that big guy over there yet. He is over this way. Okay, friend. Easy, tiger. Wait, he's not going to follow me in here, is he? Oh, he's already ready and waiting now. Well, two buffs. Fire and less damage. Okay, good start, Bitsy. Come on, buddy. Got him. Whoa. Must have spoke of A new spear. The one. And we just got two red tide spell. Oh, it's a spell. As the foul flurry intensifies with each uh, fierce thrust, the flames do rise. Transform into a wolf guy and inflict scorch bane on the enemy with each. Ooh. Okay, so we can turn into. Turn into him. Weapons and valuables cherished by Yogwise often carry lingering obsessions from their deceased owners. Collecting them grants the ability to briefly take on their form in combat. Each transformation has its own strengths, making them worth experimenting with. Oh, might. Transformations continuously consume might and require a full gorge to initiate using spells during transformation. Further depletes might. And once it is fully depleted, detransformation occurs automatically. Subsequently, might will gradually recover. Okay. Good to know. So it will eventually deplete, so I can't just stay in it forever. I've got to do what I can. So I'm guessing, like, new abilities maybe and stuff? It might even come with its own set of spells. Oh. 
You just had to make some noise, did you? Now everyone knows you're here. When a chime so grand echoes in the forest, Yao Guais will surely be alarmed. It can be. They should fear me. Oh. Thought my better go through there. Okay, I guess we go back this way. Um, I guess. Let's try... Wait, self-advance. Oh, we got a thing. We can actually upgrade this. Each talent level moderately increases the damage of the next attack after perfect dodge. So if that's if you perfect dodge with this thing, right? It's going to cost us two sparks for that, though. We need level 15, 13, 45 to the other ones. What about uh, the stance? What about if we get a new stance one? Each talent level increases the health recovery upon consuming a focus point. Okay, that sounds pretty decent. Get two of them. And that's to give us this. Oh, so it means we can work down the next tiers. Okay, got it. So this, when this comes down here, we unlock these next things. Good to know. The barrier has now unlocked. But I did want to try uh, going into my inventory and just using this. And it'll take me back to the thing, right? I know it's not far away, but I just wanted to see the use of it and if it was going to consume it or, or whatnot. But I guess we've got to head over to that uh, blue guy now. Wait a minute, it give me... I don't need to rest, it just give me everything. Did it consume it? <gasps> it didn't. Okay, so you keep hold of this all the time. Good to know. So when you just want to reset instead of running back, just use that. Okay, but lesser Yogwise, what did we just get in here? A wolf archer. The wolf archer. A master archer, none can compare. Timid when danger fills the air. Never brave when faced with fear. Escape his choice, he stays clear. The Black Wind King ho uh, hosted a banquet in a temple to celebrate his birthday, and all the Yogwise attended. During the feast, the king hung lucky ornament on a tree branch, declaring that anyone who could shoot it would receive a rare fortifying golden pill as the reward. The Yogwise were eager to try, but the fierce wind hampered all their attempts. Among the guests was an old wolf known for his remarkable archery skills. He was cautious, unassuming, and kept it to himself in a corner, nursing his drink. A few eager Yogwise asked him to try, and though he declined, they persisted with their teasing until he reluctantly agreed. Slowly, the wizened old wolf stood up and moved to his position. Some youngsters laughed at him, deeming him incapable. Underperturbed, he calmly strung his bow, let loose an arrow, and struck the target dead centre, causing a commotion among the crowd. The old wolf received the reward, and the admiration followed suit as others toasted him. Among them was a youngster. Who, com uh, co commentated, comment, who, who commented on the ballless intoxicated, how generous the king is. He remarked, far better than the Ling's Wai, Ling Zhu, Ling Zhu, who was good at making pills but never shared them with his underlings. With a, what a tight wad. The youngster uh, words cast a shadow across the old wolf's face and he silently took, took his leave. He had roamed the mountain with Ling Zhuai long before our king's reign, yet you judged his deceased former master in front of him. Loyal as he is, you are trouble now, warned an elder Guai. However, the young Guai shrugged off his warning. The next day, the old wolf returned the golden pill to the king, citing its value too high to possess by any archer. Hearing the news, the other Yogwais urged the young one to apologize and seek forgiveness, but he reminded he remained defiant. Within a few days, while venturing outside, the youngster was killed by several arrows, each piercing his heart. Many said that even the golden pill couldn't save the youngster from his fate. And that is the wolf archer. And we've got a chief as well, which is Zhang Ji oh, which is that guy who was just in that story. Cool. To prove his worth, he gave sinister advice, yet reaps the bitter fruits of his own vice. Through justice remains silent, it never sleeps, and when it strikes, no one escapes its reach. In his youth... Zhang Ji uh, was not a monk, but a little wolf guai who yearned to be human. He often took human shape to play in town, but the people always saw him, uh, saw through him and chased him away. When he asked the other Yogwais why, they explained, You may look like them, but you don't act like them. That's why they know. 
If you want to learn to be human, go and live among them. Spend time with them to learn their ways and manners. He took this advice to heart and begged his master to grant his wish. His master, old Ling Zhuai, who was a close to the black bear Gwai in the mountain, agreed. The black bear Gwai transformed the pup into a little monk and sent him to study under Elder Jin Chi, an old friend. At first, the fellow monks disliked him. They placed tricks on him, and he always fell for it, slow and gullible as he was. Jin Chi named the Jing, Jing Sai the great wisdom, hoping he would grow cleverer and sharp, so his fellow monks couldn't bully him. With Jin Chi's care and teaching, Jing Zhai learned to read, write, and abide by the monarch's, uh, monastic rules. Gradually, he assimilated into their ranks. One day, two monks arrived at the temple. One had fur, devout countenance, while the other had face covered in fur. They possessed a wondrous treasure, the Kasi Yao of Eversparks. Jin Chi had never seen anything like it before and longed for it desperately. Hopefully, to repay Jin Chi's teaching and nurturing, Jing Zhao devised a plan to require it for him. Jing Zhao never imagined his mistake would ignite red tides of flame that engulfed the temple he called home. Afterwards, Jin Chi took his own life, and Ling Zhao fell to the Jingo Bang. Even though the black bear Guai surrendered and was taken by Guan Yin, Guan Ji saw how many he had suffered for his sake and knew he had failed utterly at being human. He shed his monk robes and retreated to the mountains, repenting with Jin Chi's teachings. In his years of practice in the mountains, he forged a new weapon inspired by the raging flames he saw that night. He named it the Red Tides. Even to this day, after numerous years, he continues to hear persistent calls echoing through the mountains. Zhuangzi, Zhuangzi, who could it be keeps calling him. And that's the story of Jingzi. So we keep hearing about this bear who seems to be the... Possibly the king. Because they give him a lot of respect and ask permission for a lot in these stories. Missed both of them this time. Ooh! That one was stronger. Right, let's face whatever this is. Hey, friend. Okay, okay, okay. I see you. I see you. I totally forgot what this guy's name was called because I want to know what his name was in the story. Uh, was it Jing Zhao? Was this Jing Zhao? Maybe? I'll find out now because it should be available in the book. Um... Journal Chief? Oh no, maybe he's not in the book. Maybe we have to kill him to get it. I thought we, uh, you like to align them both up to be in a multi shot there. <laughs> I might as well just keep doing that as much as I can just to reduce the amount of hit points.
Jesus, that's for some range. Come on, friend. That was a nice combo we just did. Just get pounded him. DL. He's got me on this second half, though. Yes, got him knocked down. Ooh. Bloody hell. What a fight. Oh. Cannot absorb spirits without guidance. What do you mean I can't absorb it? I need guidance or something? What we just got? Slightly increases critical hit chance. Yes, please. Inventory. Blood of the Iron Bull. To achieve greatness, one effort must surpass the feat of Mosquito drawing blood from the uh, Iron Bull. To cultivate a stronger spirit. Oh, cool. Wait a minute. Did we get... Is there no story on this guy? Maybe not. Unless I need to get this thing, but... I don't know. I'm going through a bloody cave. God, this is rickety. On a cliff edge like this. I could do with uh, an incense location right now. We are traveling pretty far. So I'm going to guess... It'll take me all the way back. Oh, that's a lot of people. Oh, friendly fire. Arches are a little bit. Whoa. Guayin Temple. Is there not a thing nearby? Incense stick? Shh, keep quiet. Oh. You don't want to set off that beast. In beast? The backyard is Black Wind Guai's ally. Calls itself Ling Shutsa. Oh, Ling Shutsa. That's the way you say his name. Oh, get away while you can, little monkey. Okay, Ling Shutsha. So uh, that's how it's pronounced. Z U I S H. Let's 
Good to know. Craft armor? Headband. Allows using the gird while sprinting. But if you get two or four, maybe... Or two or four, maybe set pieces? Okay. Let's craft that. Um... Get the top as well. I can get the kind of the grease. So I've got three. So it does increase my armor and whatnot. Well, let's rest. Get replenished. And let's go and see Ling Ji Zhao. Ling Ji Ji. There's something over here, though. Might as well search around here, right? Oh, gather. Oh, I thought I was going to do like the incense stuff there. But yep. Let's go and see this guy. 